Next is CHOMP. Uh, we, we are not qualified, we are not smart enough to describe anything about CHOMP, so I think we're just going to go straight to the team themselves. CHOMP has had a lot of forms over the years. First, she was a crusher, and, which didn't do very well at all in the style of many first Balabots, and then a wheeled hammer bot, which is probably how a lot of y'all got to know her. And then now, CHOMP is a walker uh, with a turret. We decided to make a walker for several reasons. One is it actually really helps us because of the weight bonus to have 500 pounds for a hammer robot. A problem that we had with Chomp 2, Hammer Chomp, is that she would throw herself in the air when she would hammer, and then most of the energy or a large percentage of the energy that we were putting into the hammer swing would go into lifting the robot up instead of pounding our opponent down. With a heavier robot, we stay on the ground more and we can hit harder. Another reason though to build a walker is because walking robots are hard and cool. And we've never been sort of like the simple road kind of team. A thing that is really motivating, I think to everyone on this team, we're so lucky to have a huge team of motivated people is that we're trying to push the envelope and build something new um, and hard and exciting. And a walker is that. Hi, I'm Yasha, and I'm going to talk about how one of Chomp's leg modules works. Uh, all of the leg actuation on Chomp is pneumatic. Um, each leg has three degrees of freedom. The biggest one is uh, swing, where the leg moves forward and back in this axis. Uh, the second biggest is lift, which lifts the leg up and down. And the last is the toe curl, which is a small axis. And it's not a simple pivot like the other two, it's part of a four bar system, and that's so that when the lift axis moves the legs up and down, the foot remains vertical. It's just a simple parallel, parallel four bar. Uh, without that, the tip of the toe would dive under as you lower the lift and swing out as you lift it. We didn't want to deal with that. Um, so there's three simple uh, pneumatic cylinders driving each axis. Uh, you can probably see the um, swing cylinder here, and they're just slightly modified commercial off-the-shelf uh, you know, piston and rod setups. Uh, those are controlled by uh, infield uh, servo pneumatic systems. There's three of them on, on each leg. Each one controls one of the axes. To coordinate that, we have our own custom leg board, which um, supplies uh, feedback to the infields. They, they're designed for industrial automation, zero to 10 volt, and we couldn't find any of those type of uh, feedback uh, sensors that fit inside of this thing. Instead, we use tiny little angle sensors which are hiding inside the joints, hiding from spinners. Um, but the uh, leg board that we designed uh, listens to communications from the central controller and listens to the sensors inside of the, the joints and feeds all that back to the infield system, and the infield closes the loop on each on each axis. Here is a partially disassembled leg module. You can see the three infield S2 cylinder positioning systems that run the cylinders, and then you can see one of the cylinders. You can see it's sort of just a simple actuator. This is the leg board that takes input from the main computer on the hole and tells the three infields what to do. We were not using our full speed in our first match. And there are two reasons. The first one is Tom's just never going to be that fast. Walking is not going to compete with wheels. We're never going to chase anyone down. There's not that much of a point. And so we just kind of got to wait for them to come, or come to us and then hammer them really hard. But the other reason is I didn't want to run out of air. Even with the largest SCBA tank that we could get our hands on, we only have enough air for about three minutes of middling speed walking. And it would be so sad to fight a great fight and then not be able to walk and move because we're out of air and lose the match. The maximum speed that I've gotten Chomp walking with our current software um, like control is probably twice what you saw in that match. Theoretically, 
Trump should be able to walk something on the order of six miles an hour, which is fast. That's like a human jogging. Um, we've never really realized that because the infields, we haven't been able to get the infield control to, be, to stable at that uh, repetition rate, which is reasonable. They don't make any claims that you should be able to do that. It's a really difficult control problem. But uh, hopefully with a little bit of finagling, we can actually get Chomp to walk closer to that speed. This season, we absolutely designed Chomp, as we have in the past, to have both auto-targeting and auto-chomp, which is automatic camera firing, as functions available to the weapons operator on a dead man switch. Both of those relied on a little LiDAR that looked out in a fan array of, of beams and used a filter to look for and solve for position and velocity of the object we thought was most likely to be our opponent. Super duper sadly, and you can read a little more about this in our post coming on Instagram and Facebook, when we actually put the hull and the turret all together, the night before we were down at BattleBots for the first time, we had a mystery problem where this armor that protects our hammer sprockets and drivetrain interfered somehow with the LiDAR returns. We super carefully positioned the lighter down below the armor and modeled all the view frustra of the emitter uh, and the sensor to make sure that nothing would interfere with it. And yet something about this configuration was bad and we couldn't get that sensor working. Composite armor off. You can see this is the main axle that does throw on this side and retract on this side with two big cylinders in the back. And this is where the LiDAR would be, right in the middle of this gap, hanging down below the armor, but it is not there. So sad. We had to choose between armoring the heart of the turret and using the LiDAR. So we took the LiDAR off. And all the, all the turret operation was done by our weapons operator, Yasha Little, um, who we think did a very nice job. But uh, we were very, very sad because... One of the things that we want to do more of is get the human out of the loop.